The state government on Sunday announced the recovery and discharge of five more COVID-19 patients having tested negative twice to the virus. Governor Babajide Sonwulu said in a statement that the five patients included four females and one male. The governor added that the state had a total of 55 people that have been successfully managed for COVID-19 at its isolation facilities and discharged to the community. Joining us via Skype is Professor Uyewale Tomori, a professor of virology. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. So well, we're so busy repeating information about preventive measures such as wash your hands, uh, maintain social distancing and, and the likes. But we seem to know very little about the nature of the virus. Could you enlighten us, please? Uh, thank you very much. The, the virus is a, a coronavirus, which has been in existence for quite a long time. And other members of the family include the viruses that cause the common cold. Uh, but this is a new one of the corona family. Uh, we call it a new child in the family of the coronaviruses. There's been something close to that. We have the mars cov which was the Middle Eastern uh, case of uh, corona that we had some years ago. And then we had the SARS-CoV. This is actually called the SARS-CoV-2, uh, which originated from uh, Wuhan in China. It's been spreading all over the world now and is now known as a pandemic. Virtually every country in the world has had one case or the other. And some, we're talking of thousands and thousands of cases. In Africa, we are moving on towards that level. Um, Africa has had close to over 10,000 cases now, uh, with South Africa leading. Uh, Nigeria has been told just had about 238 or 35 cases. Why does it seem to have had such a catastrophic effect when we are told that it is the, in the same class as the common cold? Well, you know, the family of the common cold virus, there are so many viruses there, over 200 of them. Um, this one is a new one, new in the sense that uh, it, it was what you call, there's something we call mutation. When different viruses from different species mix together, they produce something new, uh, which is new to the world. And because this is new to the world, and that's why we're having nobody having immunity against it. And therefore, it's spreading all over the world. What of the rumor that it could be airborne? Please, could you nail this for us? Yeah, yeah actually, because this is a, a respiratory infection in which people sneeze and cough. In the process of sneezing and coughing, uh, the, the droplets, the viruses are containing the droplets. And if you are that close to somebody else who is sneezing and coughing, then it is likely that some of those droplets could, could land on your mouth, your eyes, your nose, um, and then establish in those places and cause the infection. I think unlike, say, Ebola, for example, or you really have to be directly close to the person. Uh, this one, you don't have to be close to the person. Um, he spread the, the coughing and the sneezing, actually spreads the virus in that. And if he coughs and some of those drop on surfaces around you, uh, and you get, you can contaminate yourself, your hand and your clothes with all those things. And that's why washing of hands become one of the good ways to ensure that you don't get infection. Okay. There are speculations about the fact that the virus seems a lot more deadlier in Europe and America, and it's not as much, the scale that we see in Africa is not as much as we see in other parts of the world. Um, what do you think is responsible for this? There have been different kind of speculations. Well, let me start by saying that Africa is just getting its own batch of, of the infection. We're the last of the continents to get this infection. Um, a few people are dying, but not not like what you are finding in, in Europe or other places. People talked about so many factors have been, have been held accountable or responsible for this. One is people, old age people with underlying conditions, uh, diabetes, heart problems, and those other things. And when this virus comes, then it compounds the problem, and then you have more deaths. 
Uh, it's been said that young people who are quite healthy do not, but that is changing now. As I said, this is a new virus, and we're learning about it on a daily basis. So for now, it is not a major problem in Africa in terms of the severity of the disease, but we are still watching a, a, an unfolding infection. And uh, like our people say, uh, the rain is falling. Uh, you wait until it finishes before you can say it's as much as yesterday or not. Okay, let's talk about uh, the vaccine, the search for one. Um, is there any new information that you can share with us? Are we any close? There are at least 20 companies who are rushing to get a vaccine out. But even if they, they got the vaccine, it's going to take at least another a year or so because of going through the process of, uh, of confirming that the vaccine is good for human beings. And so you have to go through different uh, trial phases, uh, what you call clinical trials. Uh, it will take quite some time. First, you start with a few group of people to test the, the safety of the va vaccine. And then you add more, uh, a larger number of people to check, not only for the safety, but also for the efficacy, in which means we're saying, uh, do people develop immunity? Now, will they be protected against the infection? This is the period to test that, because uh, if you use the vaccine now uh, in, in an area where this is spreading, and the vaccinees, you know, are protected, then you know the vaccine is efficacious. And you also, in addition to that, you need to check whether the vaccine itself is not causing any side effect, you know, in the people who get it. So the process is going to take quite some time. Another, some people say six months or up to, even sometime up to a year. But remember the Ebola situation. Uh, we had to fast track the, 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 the getting of the vaccine. But even that one, it took quite some time to get it. So vaccine is not in the offering in the next two or three months. It will take some, quite some time before we have a vaccine that is available to people to use. Uh, some have accused the African scientists of um, seeming to look outside for a solution. Why can't we develop one in our labs? What are the bottlenecks to this? The greatest bottleneck for scientists in Africa are two things. One, we have a government that have no, no respect for science, disdains science, doesn't think science is of any use, uh, so long as it's not oil that you can extract and buy the money immediately. Uh, people who have invested in science overseas are now reaping the benefits, but they're putting resources into science. Take our environment. They, we have a toxic environment in many African countries. Science cannot thrive under the environment where we are, where you have no electricity, you have no water. Uh, scientists are not regarded as anything. Of course, you can't get anything from science. Those other countries where they are making good use of science now have put a lot of resources into it. They put up front, they put in money to it. They've improved the environment. They've made the, 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 the environment conducive for science to thrive and to function. Many African countries are only dependent on other people's science, and that's why where we are. So if you're dreaming of any vaccine coming out of Africa, forget it. It's not going to happen, not with the state in which we are. This where is a situation that we yeah. haven't seen before. Yes, we have our unique challenges. We always have problems as a people and as Africans. But this is anybody that comes up with a vaccine now, it's not only going to have, um, you know, the respect of his um, colleagues, but it's going to push the country that he came from uh, to the spotlight. So what can be done at this moment to encourage scientists to be a bit more invested in the process of looking for a vaccine for this pandemic that is baffling everyone? Uh, let me say from the beginning, you need a foundation. The foundation is not there. So as far as we are concerned, anything you're doing now will not catch this COVID. If you're looking at the future, yes, but we have to lay the foundation now. What our people are doing, what our governments are doing, are putting icing on a bad cake. The foundation is not there for science. And so you cannot catch up what is going on now. We're already far behind. We have to start again from the beginning, get our foundation right, and when the next epidemic comes or whatever it is, then we'll be ready. But forget it, we're not ready for this one. So let's not deceive ourselves, and that's the truth. All right, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on the news. It's appreciated. It's my pleasure.